Tip. It's P. Samples. The revolution will be digitized. Real Talk Session Series. The revolution will be digitized. Talk session series, the revolution. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Taryn Morgan, the founder and creative director of the Real Talk Session Series. Thank you once again for tuning in to another episode. Uh, this is the last episode of season one, and of course, I got to finish up strong with a phenomenal woman, the CEO and founder of Grage Fashion, Miss Brittany Hardy. How are you doing today? Hi, good. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. So thank you for inviting me. Definitely, um, I've seen your work for a couple of years. Yes. You, you've been grinding, yeah. and you've been growing <laughs> on the low, and that's one of yeah. the stories that I love. So mm -hmm. please tell everybody about yourself and Grage, how you started yes. it. Um, so... I started Grage um, August 2016. Okay. Um, by trade, I have worked in the fashion industry since um, I graduated college in 2011. Okay. Um, so I kind of put in my time of making sure that throughout my career, once I graduated, I was in companies that I was able to like learn a lot so okay. that by the time I started Grage, I was able to kind of have um, some background skills on like how to successfully like run a business, especially in fashion. Mm -hmm. um, and then literally like in the middle of one night, it was probably like one o'clock in the morning. I was like, okay, I think I'm gonna like start this like nice. now. Um, so I started that and then in 2018 mm -hmm. in um, December, I like made the leap to quit my day job nice. and the just dream that everyone focus, has. Yes, just focus on this and it's been a really exciting and like life learning um, experience so far. Okay, that's excellent. Yeah. And that's definitely a great inspirational story that people need to hear about. <laughs> Can you speak on a little bit of your background? We're yes. going to get to Grage later on, okay. but I think it's important those small steps in the beginning yeah. to how you got here. So yeah. can you break that down to the people? Yeah, so there's a lot of them. Um, so I, I'm one of the very rare few individuals, I think, that I kind of knew that I wanted to be in fashion probably mm -hmm. by the time I was in like fourth or fifth grade. Wow, that's really um, okay. Yeah, so... Um, so like, were you picking out your outfits back then? Yeah, okay. so pretty much um, my mom is a seamstress, so she so so I was always around a very creative person. Like, she always bought me like jewelry making kits. Like, I mm. had paper dolls. Um, we love to go shopping, obviously. Okay. Um, so that was kind of where my love of fashion came from. And initially, I wanted to be an artist, but I was like, you know, like... I was like, I kind of, you know, the Picassos and all of them, like, didn't really get their claim to fame until, like, way after they were on. alive. And I was like, look, I want something that <laughs> yeah, a little, a little I can kind of monetize, like, while I'm alive. Mm -hmm. um, so we used to watch, um, there used to be a New York channel that came on, and we used to watch fashion shows all the time. Okay. And I always drew in school, like, all the time. So I was like, you know, I like clothes, and I love the whole concept of, what you can kind of come from a sketch or a piece of fabric. Mm -hmm. um, so then fast forward um, to high school. Um, Shout out to Neptune. Yes. <laughs> um, and then I graduated and I went and I um, focused on fashion design. And I also um, focused, had a concentration on like fashion business. Okay. So I wanted to make sure I got kind of an all around because, you know, nice clothes are nice, but yeah, then definitely. you have to sell them. So yes. You kind of have to know, you know, both worlds. Exactly. Um, so after that, so when I was in college, I did a lot of internships. Um, I interned at like Fashion Week. So I got okay. a lot of like behind the scenes experience. Um, I also interned at Michael Kors. Uh, um, so that was, like, that bit. was amazing. Okay. Um, and like he was always in the office, like mm. very nice person. Um, and then I also studied abroad in Italy. Um, when I was in school. So that also gave me a more that connection. worldly, yeah. you know, connection in the industry. And then once I graduated, um, I worked in jewelry for a little bit with okay. like merchandising as, you know, cause it was, but I think when we graduated, it was kind of like that time where like, you know, it was a little rough struggle getting like that first yeah. career. Um, and then um, my first position um, was as a design assistant. So I literally um, worked on apparel 
and mm-hmm. sketching and tech packs and that whole process. And that's where I first got my experience with like working with factories okay. and working with that whole process of like how you go from sketch to like clothes that yeah. are able to be sold. And then I've also always had a love affair with shoes. Okay. Um, so I was like, you know, I think that I want to kind of take that route and see what shoe design could be like because yeah. i'm the type of person like i just like to do a lot of things okay. i like to be creative while i was at my that position i started taking courses in footwear design and mm-hmm. learned that whole process because i like to create things um and then i picked up that and then after that i actually was going to go to london college of fashion okay. which i got into um, oh, and congrats, I was like, congrats. you know, yeah. thanks. And I was like, you know, um, I got closer to it and it was kind of a decision where an opportunity popped up for me to enter into a career path of footwear mm-hmm. design. And I kind of felt like, you know, did I kind of like want to go back into school, move like across, you know, the yeah. world to like pick that back up again. So I made the decision to kind of stay here and work mm-hmm. on kind of that hands-on experience. Yeah. Um, so I stayed in footwear design for about three and a half, four years. And mm. there I also had the opportunity to go to China a lot. Um, so that was a whole nother experience because as we know, everything is made. They're big in fashion in China. over there too. Yeah. Um, so that was also nice being able to like network and make connections in China because mm. that's like that kind of brought the whole process full circle for me where by the time I was ready to start Grage, I kind of like had all these puzzle pieces and I had all this knowledge and I was like, okay, what am I kind of like doing with all this? And I just got really, um, I don't like to get comfortable in life and I felt like, you know, I loved what I was doing Mm -hmm. and I was very fortunate to have a career in fashion, you know, like that's a lot of people's dreams. Exactly. But I felt like it wasn't like, it wasn't truly fulfilling because, you know, I'm designing all this stuff, but I'm designing all this stuff for this company or yeah. this big department store. And it's not really, you know, it wasn't for me and it mm-hmm. wasn't my, I, not my ideas, but, you know, in school you're taught to be creative yeah. and to be innovative and have your own inspiration. And it just kind of became like very cookie cutter yeah, when definitely. you're working for like someone else. And, you know, yeah, this is a great sketch, but we want it to look more like this. Mm. And I just felt like, you know, my goal um, when I first started college was to always have my own company and have my own things. Yeah. So that is when last year, well, 2016, mm-hmm. you know, like quietly behind the scenes, I was like getting things started and yeah. working full time. And last year it just kind of got a little too much yeah. where it's kind of like, okay, I can keep working and keep, you know, getting that consistent <laughs> paycheck, <laughs> but deep down inside feel like, okay, this is stressful. Yeah. Or I could like finally make that leap like off the cliff and like, okay, what is it that you really want to do with yourself? Mm-hmm. And then I like, I was getting closer to turning 30 and I told myself uh, when I was in college, like, okay, by the time I'm 30, I'm going to have a company. I'm going to have something. And that was kind of closing. Yeah. <laughs> that was kind of closing in on me. And I was like, okay, what do I need to do? So I took a good year to really think about it mm-hmm. and plan for it and, you know, discuss because, you know, I live with my fiance. So that was yeah. like, you know, Shout a conversation yeah. that has to be made. Like, look, this is what I'm thinking. Uh-huh. This is what I'm planning on doing. And then it got to the point. I was like, okay, I pick a date. We planned it out, and then I was like, right, this is the date I'm going to do it, and I, like, haven't really looked back since. So. Okay. But that's definitely an amazing story, yeah. and I think it's crucial for younger generations mm-hmm. and people who are trying to start different businesses to hear, right. because oftentimes they try to take mm-hmm. a jump over all those crucial steps. You need to have experience to have the wisdom, and, of course, you could have took the easier way out right. and then went direct, but you got those quality experiences yeah. and you built those connections and networks. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely salute to you because that's something that, you know, people need to hear about mm-hmm. those struggle stories and whatnot. Yes. <laughs> and especially like the fact that you took that jump. Yeah. So salute to you. So Thank you. can you tell us about Grage mm-hmm. and like what it means to you? Yes. 
So for me, um, so background with the name. Okay. So Grage um, in school, like in our textiles, because, you know, we learn about fabrics and all that. Mm -hmm. um, so a Grage or a gray good is kind of like the okay. first process of all clothes. So it's like before they're dyed, they're like yeah. cleaned, like they're like a grayish color. Okay. Um, so I thought about that because... For me, like, you know, when I get up and I get dressed in the morning, like, you know, your outfit, like, makes your day. Like, if yeah. I don't like my outfit, I'm usually, like, not in a good mood the entire uh -huh. day. Um, so I felt like, you know, what we wear and what we put on, like, our body is, like, our canvas or, like, our beginning, like, mm -hmm. work of art, so to speak. Yeah. So, you know, your clothes are, like, that finished product that yeah, you get once you get dressed. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of my thought process behind okay. kind of the and like that kind of goes to i always think about the Deion sanders quote you look good you feel good you <laughs> right, feel good you play true. good yeah because you know? like you're just I, you just feel like good about yourself when you know you have a nice outfit yeah. you just like thought about it i know that like you know fashionistas out there like you know mm -hmm. that's like a part of like your day like i was that girl in college that like I, I don't think you ever saw me like wearing like sweatpants. Not yeah. to say that that's like. <laughs> She's not here standing on y'all. Not like it's a bad thing, yeah. but I enjoy the process of like clothes and like, you know, things that you don't see everywhere, like mm -hmm. putting thought behind that. So okay. that's kind of where that came from. All right, cool. Yeah. So, like with your clothes, mm -hmm. I guess, what's the statement that you try to make with them? Yes. So I, when I like to travel mm -hmm. and whenever I travel, I have like a day of like shopping okay. and I like to look for things that are like different that you maybe can't find everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I try to select clothes that, you know, are kind of easy because, you know, there's some fashion that's like a little fussy and it's like, I feel like you know, the average consumer that's trying to look for something stylish. Yeah. Like, there's some things that it's like, oh, my God, I can't wear that. Or I don't know how that's going to look on me. So I try to find pieces that, you know, are easy to put together, you know, like a cute dress. But you're mm -hmm. also, like, making, you know, a confident statement that, yeah. you know, you don't have to always have, like, everything showing. You know, like, uh -huh. sometimes, you know... So I kind of pick things that, you know, you can wear to work, you can wear on the weekend, if you want to go out, if you have like date night, like I try to select things like that that just help you feel confident. All of your pieces, are they handmade or do you have them outsourced, yes. manufactured? So everything is, um, so I started out, um, so if anyone is in the fashion industry, they've probably heard of like the LA fashion market and mm -hmm. then there's a the big trade show that you go and you're pretty much... Um, like the buyer. Yeah. So you kind of source things. Um, and I just kind of felt like, you know, there's a lot of online boutiques. There's a lot of successful online boutiques. Mm -hmm. And it starts to get somewhat saturated with the offerings. Like I know sometimes on a given day, like I'll see like the same outfit yeah. at like different places. So I, with my network and with mm -hmm. my experience, I source from here in the U.S. I source items from Paris, okay. from London. Um, and then I have had a few things that I've been able to like have exclusives that I've designed myself. Nice. So every season, that's like a side project of mine so that I'm still able to kind of add in my designing background mm -hmm. a little bit into it. Okay. Um, so I'll kind of like design a few things. Like last winter, I did like some coats that I designed myself and I... Um, had them made like at a factory nice. um, in East Asia. So that's kind of like the process of like all the yeah. clothes. And yeah. a lot of people don't hear about the background when yes. it comes to clothes. They only see the final product. So right. thank you for speaking on that mm -hmm. because that's valuable information yeah. that people mm -hmm. don't know, but yes. they need to hear. Yeah. You know? it's, it's, I'm also, I think it's important to also make sure to do your due diligence yes. and research I think that because of social media nowadays, um, it's very easy to, oh, this person is teaching this and this person is, I can see, like, you know, yeah. and it's not to knock that hustle because I've used people that I found off of social media that have been really helpful to uh -huh. me when I got to certain steps and I'm like, okay. I don't know enough. I can't find out enough about yeah. this particular process. So I think that, you know, Google is like your best yeah, friend. And to definitely make sure that, you know, you 
know everything that you're putting into it, mm -hmm. you know, to be successful, you kind of have to, you, you can't always find someone else to kind of yeah. like hold your hand throughout the process. So that's why I, you know, talk about the things behind it. Cause some people, when I first started, they don't talk about the clothes and they don't talk about yep. where they came from. They don't. And I don't know why, because like, it's not really a secret, like, it's LA, there if you read. LA, yeah. this is here, this is here. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely something that I think, you know, is important for people because that might be offsetting to someone that's like, I don't know how to do it, so I'm just not going to yeah, do definitely. it. I can't figure it out. Yeah, and a lot, of, especially when it comes to social media, mm -hmm. it gives people that kind of, oh, I can do this instantaneously. It gives a false perception of yeah. the process. Mm -hmm. You have, that process is going to be full yeah. of struggle and that's where you learn. Right. That's where those success stories are made. Exactly. And so going back to that, if you can tell yourself mm -hmm. in the very beginning something mm -hmm. that was key to your success today, what would it be? Um, hmm. I think mostly determination. Okay. I think because if I... I probably could have started earlier, yeah. but I think that I got myself stuck in that trying to have a good work ethic and, yeah. you know, you're supposed to go to college and you get your job mm -hmm. and you work really hard yeah. and you move up. And I think that I kind of got stuck in a way towards that. So yeah. I think that probably staying on par early on would have been a yeah. little bit more helpful. You know what I mean? Like maybe I could be a little bit farther along than mm -hmm. I am now. Kind yeah. of. I, I get what you're saying. Definitely. Cause like, especially in this country, if we're mm -hmm. conditioned from a very young age yeah. to go to college, to right. go the traditional route, but necessarily entrepreneurship isn't also always pushed, mm -hmm. but I'm glad that there's more entrepreneurs yes. and especially when it comes to black women, because yeah. you are the biggest cohort of right entrepreneurs groups yeah. coming up nowadays so mm -hmm. you know i think that these success stories are crucial you yes. know and thank you for sharing it because yeah. it's valuable that yeah. the youth need to hear and other people who are feeling hopeless <laughs> yeah. yes definitely so as i mentioned i've seen you grinding on the low for a while mm -hmm. and now it's starting to really blossom yes so what's the next step for grage yes so with grage so right now um from the retail aspect, I have things that, you know, I'm pretty much the buyer for Grace, so I go and source a lot of these outfits. Mm -hmm. um, but from that, I do want to grow it into more of my design background. Okay. Um, so I do want to grow it into, you know, Grace exclusives, where like in the winter you might get like a few coats or jackets mm -hmm. and having a few like special pieces that mm -hmm. I've designed myself. And then also with my knowledge of footwear, mm -hmm. that is another aspect that I am kind of working on on the side in the background okay. to build um, footwear that I have designed myself okay. for the brand as well. Now, do you do any custom pieces if people request? Um, not at the moment. No. Not at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. But I'll let y'all know when she starts <laughs> doing that, though, because we, we, got, we got to support her, definitely. <laughs> so thank you so much for yes. inviting me. Mm -hmm. How can the people learn more about your company? And how? Yeah. most importantly, how can they buy your stuff? Yeah, so they can go to www.greyshop, <laughs> so G-R-E-I-G-E, shop.com. Um, that same is our Instagram name, our Instagram handle is Gray Shop. Um, and then my personal page where sometimes you'll see my behind the scenes stuff okay. is the real Hardy B. Okay, perfect. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. And please make sure you check out her stuff. Like when I say it's definitely been evolving into something even bigger and greater, like check it out because Brittany's truly yeah. doing her thing, you know, so <laughs> Thank salute to you. her. Um, once again, thank you for tuning in. This is the season finale for the Road Talk session, but we have some special stuff planned for the summertime. So keep your eye out on our social media pages. So Real Talk Session Series on Instagram and Facebook. And also we're on Twitter, but we'll drop that later on. So we have some surprise um, content coming or some audio only stuff. Also, we'll be dropping our newest show in the upcoming weeks, too. So please keep tuned. So thank you so much for tuning in to season one. Real Talk Session Series, The Revolution Will Be Digitized. The Revolution Will Be Digitized. Real Talk Session Series, The Revolution Will Be Digitized. Real Talk Session Series, The Revolution Will Be Digitized.